Welcome to the Fabulous at 50 podcast, where we are changing the aging narrative. I'm your host, Joanne Newaduck, and I'm thrilled to bring you stories that matter and celebrate your place in the world. As an advocate for lifelong learning, health, and women's empowerment, I believe it's never too late to live the life you've always imagined. Through lively and informative interviews with inspiring guests, we'll explore a wide range of topics relevant to our global sisterhood of vibrant, inquiring women just like you. Join me for today's episode and let's start changing the aging narrative together. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. Have you ever looked at a photograph and you get that the photographer didn't just capture the image of the person, but they captured their essence? Well, my guest today does exactly that. From taking photos for business to boudoir, Lori is a master at making people feel comfortable and allowing their true essence to come out. She owns Lori McBrown Photography, and today I welcome Lori Brown. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Joanne. I appreciate you inviting me to be here. Well, I'm so happy to have you here, and I just want to start off by saying that I have had you photograph me, not in one of the big, amazing sessions, which I know is coming up at some point uh, this year, but in, in more of a, uh, it was for a magazine where you were photographing lots of women. And I have to say what I was blown away by is even within that time restraint that you're given for that type of assignment, I found that um, like the one year for sure is you captured what is my favorite headshot that I still use. <laughs> I need to update it a little bit more, but it is, what I loved about what you do, and we'll go into this more, is that you really positioned me and got me to feel comfortable in front of the camera, but also like, even if it feels awkward, it, it comes out wonderful. So I'd love to go into all that, but let's let's start off first with just finding out a bit about you, like what, um, right now you're a successful photographer, but what led you here? Like, were you the kid that at four or five years old was grabbing your parents' camera? Or is this something you came upon later on in life? I'm definitely not the person who was, you know, coming out of the womb with a camera in my hand. <laughs> I did really enjoy photography. I took a film photography class when I was in grade nine. Super okay. enjoyed that. I think I did grade 10 as well. But back at that time of my life, I didn't see that as a career opportunity. So mm into business. I went to the top business school in the country and went into a corporate career. So my career as a photographer is my second career. I started this about, uh, wait, 11 years ago is mm -hmm. when I mm -hmm. left my corporate job and uh, went into photography full-time. And obviously I started it even before that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess once I once I established myself and I was making money, I realized because photography was expensive, right? Um, it is. But I could afford to buy the camera and I had a new baby and I was taking pictures with my regular camera. This was before cell phones or before they were, the smartphones got really good cameras. And I was like, how do you get it so that it looks, you know, like, so that it looks better. I couldn't do it. So I took some classes, started diving into that. And um, that was it. I fell in love with photography and people started asking me to photograph their families and so on and so forth. But the way I got into what I'm doing now is I was finding that I was photographing, you know, moms and their babies. And the moms would be like, well, what, how should I stand? Like, what should I do? And I was like, oh my gosh, I actually don't know. Because I had taken classes on photography, but not posing. Right, so, the modeling side of that. I love how um, I always admire and I always am a big cheerleader for being a lifelong learner. And so I love how you're like, oh, you saw me now you went. So is there literally classes you can take to learn how to pose people? Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, I okay. discovered Sue Bryce, who is my mentor. She's mm -hmm. an amazing photographer in person. And um, she 
she gave me all the tools I needed and I continue, I continue to learn how to pose people. And so now I consider myself an expert in posing. I can pose people of all ages, all sizes. And I'll give you a secret here too, because some people think the posing is different for, for people who are larger. It's not, it's all the same posing, um, but it's, a, it's also about making people feel comfortable. Absolutely. And that, that I think is a real skill that some photographers have and some don't. So I want to put a little plug that listen to the end of this podcast, because at the end, I'm going to be asking Lori to give us at least three tips on how you pose or how you stand so that your own photographs will look better, even if you're not in a uh, professional uh, portrait um, session. So One of the things I know, I mentioned that you uh, take from business to boudoir, and and that's just from my experience, because what I've seen is you do specialize with taking photographs of women, even though you mentioned you've taken family and you've probably done, this is your niche market. This is your like real passion. I can tell this is your passion. (laughs) And, and for women that are in business, especially entrepreneurs, you do, you, like you said, you bring out their essence. You want to show them. And I've seen that you even have where the woman might be in the same outfit, but you purposely have different expressions on her face, depending on what she's going to be using it for. So this seems like a real, like a niche. And then we'll talk about boudoir in a minute, but tell me a little bit more about business photography. Like what's different about that marketing? Of course, of course. Um, So every photo I take is going to be beautiful. That's a given. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you come to me that. <laughs> <laughs> when you come to me for your personal branding or headshot photography, uh, it needs to be more than that. It needs to be impactful and it needs to match your marketing. It needs to take into account who are you trying to connect with. Mm-hmm. And that is one thing that differentiates me as a headshot and branding photographer is that I, I try to discover what your personal brand is before your session so that I'm taking images that are going to make sense for your marketing. And if you right. the more you share about your marketing plan, the more I can be like, oh, well, you know, if we have images like this, then this is going to connect with this audience. And you you might have a variety of people in your audience. Like the example that I showed you um, before was a realtor. You know, it's, you need a different, show a different facet of your personality for people who are selling their homes versus buying their homes. Mm-hmm. And change mm-hmm. expression is all you need to for a more serious message versus a like, hey, I'm fun to hang out with message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really love that you showed me that. So um, you know, anyone that's interested in working with a photographer, whether it's Lori or someone else, because obviously there's there's people listening from all over, but um one of the things I would say after working with you a bit is is interview your photographer, find out if your photographer wants to know about you or not and choose one accordingly because it it is an investment. And I loved how you showed me this. It was a beautiful woman. And in one of the pictures, she had a more serious look on her face because that was, I want someone that's going to get my house sold. Right. And then the other one, as you said, it was like super friendly and welcoming. And this is for somebody like, oh, this is a big decision. I want someone that I feel comfortable with to take me around to look for my home. So I love that. Um, now, now let's switch over to the, the real fun stuff. Uh, you're, you do boudoir photography. And I, I'm sure there's women listening to this right now kind of going, oh, I could never do that. <laughs> and women that are going, oh, I've always wondered, but I couldn't do that. You know, like there's that different kind of pull. Tell me a bit how you got into that. And then we'll also talk about in a little bit, um, you have a program called 40, um, 40 over 40. We'll touch. I don't know if those two go hand in hand or if you can talk about them separately, but let's, let's hear a bit about those. Yeah, for sure. 40 over 40 is a boudoir campaign. So they do kind of go hand in hand. Of and course. the reason I did that and the reason why I am, promoting myself as a boudoir photographer is that I, I had a client one time who was here for more of a glamour session. And I always ask like, you know, do you have anything else you'd like to be photographed in? And, um, she said, no, but when I saw her putting her stuff away, I saw lingerie in there. I was like, Oh, she chickened out. I think she brought that thinking maybe. Right. So if I start with that and I'm like, okay, we're doing boudoir, (laughs) then it's a given like, 
Got we can it. go there. You don't have to be shy about bringing it up. It's already brought up. It and gives them permission, right? It gives it them does. permission and a little expectation, a little push. Somebody always has the right to go, no, I don't want that. Maybe I want, I don't know, more leisure. Totally. Wear, but, but it's, I, I get what you're saying, that if you lead with that, then then it's kind of like, okay, I'll do that even if I have other outfits. And then tell me how, like, how does this process work? Because I imagine women, I know for myself, I'd be going, ah, you know, like, I'm not well, sure I that I to, want myself photographed in this. What I want to say about that is when I talk to women about their boudoir session, so a lot of them are coming for 40 over 40 and they're, they, they give me that reaction, like, Ooh, don't know if that, you know, the lingerie and like the stockings and all that is me. I'm like, no, that's totally fine. Because boudoir is not going to be defined by me, and it's not going to be defined by what you see in magazines like Playboy, which are generally Mm. kind of a male gaze type of image. Mm. They are defined by you. And so if that means you're just wearing a super tight dress, but you're fully clothed, that is boudoir. Okay. You could wear anything. I've had people be completely nude. And I've had people just wear something that would fall, you know, in what I would maybe define as more glamour. But for them, it's pushing themselves out of their comfort zone. And that, I guess, is what the way I would define boudoir is like, it's the feeling that you get from those Mm -hmm. images, not showing every bit of your skin. It's the implied. Yeah, I'm hearing you. What I'm getting and what I notice in your photography is there's more of an element of sensuality versus sexuality. Like they're both important and they're both valued. And I love how like 40 over 40, I assume that's 40 women over 40 years old kind of thing or more. So to really show that, you know, we are sensual sexual beings throughout our whole life. Right. And let's, let's honor that because I know I saw one of my favorite pictures that I've seen that you took was, she, it was a woman, and I can't remember if it was in black and white, but she was like lying on a bed or or a chaise or something like that. And she had like a sheet draped over her. Most, she was probably more covered than when she's just standing there in clothing, but it was, you know, only her shoulders were bare. And it yeah. just gave that essence of, oh, the silkiness of the sheets and that sensuality and and yeah, like I, I, yeah, it was a full, full sensory uh, experience. Yes. Yeah. I, that's exactly right. Is that you're showing off their <laughs> shape, not necessarily showing every bit of skin mm-hmm. and just get letting people feel that way too. Like they're feeling beautiful and the more you feel beautiful, the more you look beautiful. Right. Yes. You know, I'll share with you. I once, this is a number of years ago, but I was once talking, I think it was at like a party, a gathering, a social event. And I was talking to a couple male friends that I have that were there and something came up about what men think, what is sexy about a woman, right? From a woman's perspective, if you ask a woman, what do you think a man thinks is sexy? You know, they come up with various body parts and things. What I was blown away by, at least this group of men, they were a really cool group of men. When I said, what do you think is the sexiest thing about a woman? And one of the men piped up and said, confidence. Mm -hmm. And every other man said, yes, they didn't care so much about the shape and the size. You know, they go, as long as it looks like the woman is taking care of herself and has confidence you know, not necessarily being bold and brash, but is comfortable in her own skin, no matter what size that skin is, that's what they found was sexy. It really changed my perception a lot. Um, And I know women, as we get older and and my fab at 50 group, once we get into 50 and 60, a lot start going, I don't care what anyone else thinks, right? Like I would imagine, and tell me if you think this is correct, that the women that do these, you know, engage in these boudoir shots or, or, or photo sessions, it is less about, it is not really about anyone else. It's about them. hundred yeah. so percent. Tell, tell me a bit of the transformation that goes on from when a woman first signs up to when she's, she's got her photography or photograph, or you also have like a gala at the end later on, like 
Tell me what goes on that's different there. Yeah, there's actually an art exhibit too in a gala, and it's about sharing their stories. So not mm-hmm. only am I showing um, a portrait of each woman, but I'm sharing their story right underneath it as well so that you can get mm. learn more about the person you're seeing in front of you versus just seeing a really pretty picture. You can kind of learn what why they wanted to be involved in this, what maybe they've been through in their lives, because it, it's wild. People often come to me because they're, they're looking for that self-confidence boost. Mm-hmm. They might have mm-hmm. had something happen in their lives, whether it be a divorce or weight gain or some kind of illness that has really shattered um, the way they feel about themselves and their confidence. And they just want to treat themselves. They want to feel beautiful. And in the process that I deliver, they will 100%. It's a very common when we're going through the images. I go through them right after your photo shoot. So you don't even have to wait. Oh, so you're not waiting a long time while you're in the no, moment. That's beautiful. The same day. Yeah. Nice. So we go through every single image I took. And that's what I tell them when I have that consult is this is a huge confidence boost because, and I love to be there for that. I'm a little bit selfish in that way that I want to see your reaction and know. That I didn't even have time to alter those images. You're seeing every single image that I took, and that is how you look. I didn't do anything. That's how you look. And that's where, you know, the the tears come out and people are like, oh my gosh, is that me? Oh and wow. They can't deny it. They know that's them. They know those haven't been um touched in any way and that they actually are that beautiful. It's just a matter of someone seeing you that way, knowing how to capture you that way, how to get you into the right position and light you and mm. just make you feel um, comfortable enough to show your own essence. Like you were talking about at the beginning of the show, mm-hmm. you have to let down a bit of a barrier to let that out. And it's my job to make you feel comfortable. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I know I saw on your website, you have a couple little video montages and I loved, I scrolled down and there's one near the bottom where it goes through showing some of the women at the art, art exhibition, do you call it? Yeah. And looking at each other's and being interviewed as to what it was like. And, and it, they just seemed like they were glowing, right? Yes. Like it was really, it was very cool. And it was interesting too, just um, what the other people were thinking and, and the men in it as well. Do you ever do like photograph couples or men? I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even for 40 over 40, um, it's most people are doing a custom shoot. And so that means they have my dedicated, dedicated attention for the day. And so I do invite them if they would like to be photographed with anybody else. I've had people bring a spouse. I've had them bring their dog. I've had them bring their Mm. child, um, all of the above. Because, you know, you're here. You've had your hair and makeup done. If you need headshots, if you want family photos as well, we definitely can do that on the same day. And I do photograph men. Obviously, if you go to my website, you're not going to see any men. I don't market to men, but I do photograph them. Um, I photograph CEOs, I photograph authors, um, just people who are interested in having really powerful images and they get hair and makeup too. And you know how yeah. I tell, I, I explain to them, cause I know a lot of men, their first instinct is going to be like, whoa, like I don't need hair and makeup. I'm like, well, you know what your favorite sports caster has a ton of makeup on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, not doing a ton. we're not on TV. We're not doing a ton, but we are you know, making your eyebrows go in the right direction, taking care of that shine. It's not, you're not spending an hour in the makeup chair, but you know, you are made to feel like presentable and that you don't have to worry that, you know, if you, if you have a receding hairline that is shiny, we're taking care of all of that. And I think men like being taken care of too. They and do. Having beautiful images that can promote them, whether it's for, you know, on the back of their book or for, the CEO that I photographed this year, he was promoting a charitable organization that he's a big part of. So it was important. Nice, nice. So I have a question. This is for several different types of um, professions and photography is one of them. What about when you want a photograph done? Do you have someone that you go to and say, like, have you done a boudoir shot uh, or, or session? And so you have someone, is that your mentor or are there other photographers around that you admire? That Oh, well, there's, uh, 
it's a community, right? Like yeah, you're a solopreneur and you might understand this. Um, yeah. It can be quite lonely. And so you need to yeah. connect and find your people. And I'm connected to people all over the world. Um, nice. Like that mentor I mentioned earlier, Sue Bryce, we all have that mentor. And so I've met people. I have I went to a castle for a boudoir specific um, workshop that I did in 2022. And I made some really good friends there. I went to nice. a Work master's conference this year or this past year and um, reconnected with some of those friends, made some more new friends. And so um, I actually, most of my photos are self portraits, um, Okay, but when we do get together uh, often we'll photograph each other. So my most recent headshot was taken by my good friend, Abby, and she is an amazing photographer in Edmonton. Nice. And so yeah. We just, we trade because of course, if you're at a a workshop and you're learning, you need models. It's like when I go to my energy medicine workshop or something, we practice on each other. It's a great bonus when you're taking courses. What would be your advice to someone that has an interest or inkling in being a photographer? Because you did this as a, a second career. What would you recommend? How do they start? Well, I mean, it's so much easier now than when I started, like the online resources were not Mm. there when I first started. So, you know, I went to the university to kind of learn the basics. Now it's, it's everywhere. You know, you can get a lot of paid information. You can get a lot of free information, whether it's on YouTube. Um, Creative Live is a great resource for any creatives. So not just photographers, but videographers, writers, um, anyone doing in the creative field. So those are really good resources. But one thing I would say, and if I could go back in time and do that, because uh, I, I tend to be the kind of person that's like, I can learn anything and I am a hard worker and I will do the work and get it done. But there, you can take a fast track, yeah. you know, reach out to somebody who is established and who is offering coaching and get them to help you out. Get it may sound expensive at the time, but if they get you up and running faster, then at the end of the day, it's cheaper. That makes sense. How has photography or this photography business impacted, you know, your family and your family life? Has it worked, re- it worked really well? Has there been some hiccups along the way? No, it's been great. This is one of the one of the catalysts for me getting into photography full time was my middle son. My middle son was diagnosed with autism. He was going through a lot of that early start uh, therapy where you have mm. people into your home speech therapist, occupational therapist. And our, we had a nanny at the time and she decided to leave. And it, it was like, okay, either we find a new nanny. I was already working part time. Um, but at that time I was like, you know what, I think it's time for me to just step back from the corporate world because my husband had a corporate job as well. And I feel like if you're both trying to climb that corporate ladder, it leaves your family in second place. So I thought, okay, I'm going to focus on my family for now, be there for all those therapy sessions and, um, just slowly build up my photography business. So it wasn't my number one priority at that time, but it was Mm -hmm. always in the back of my mind when my kids need me less. I'm ramping this up more. And so that's exactly what I did. Beautiful. I love how when we can have our relationships and our family and our career business or so forth blend together, like that is the sweet spot. That's beautiful. Um, My next question, because we're coming close to the end, we still have a little bit of time, but I'm curious, I want to give you ample time to explain this is, can you give us three tips? to taking a good picture. And I don't mean behind, well, you can say behind the the camera, but I mean, when you are in front of the camera, you're being the subject. What, what are your three tips for that? So I'm going to start with a common mistake that people make. So a common mistake is, and especially on things like vacations, is people think about the location before they think about the lighting Mm. and lighting is number one. So if you are inside, look for the best light that you can find. If you can find a great big window that has a white curtain in front of it that helps soften the light and you put yourself directly in front of it, your wrinkles are gone. Um, 
So don't, don't think about, oh, let's go take a picture in front of this fountain or in front of this tree. Think about and look for the best light on you. So you can use okay. your phone and kind of move around, go in a circle and be like, where is the best light? And then take the photo there. Makes That's sense. Because lots of times I'll see, um, like people, and, and as you mentioned earlier, the, the, you know, the iPhones or the smartphones now have really good cameras, like better yeah. than, remember when we used to have like little 110 film and these tiny little, it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so when you can do them. And so often make sure it's not like backlighting. People stand right in front of, you know, the sun and, or really extreme shadows and light on their face. So I love and that. You can, look for lighting. Been- you can make adjustments if you have a backlit situation or something like yep. use your phone and adjust the exposure up and down. Yes. But I think like the easier answer, cause that gets a little bit more complicated. The easier answer is just like, make sure that your face is well lit because beautiful. You can't see your face. What's the point? <laughs> exactly. And so that's number one is looking for good light. And number two is a lot of us, um, get a double chin because we actually when we stand for a photo that people's default is to kind of have their head like this head right? head back. <laughs> yeah well, you know. um nobody's taking your picture from the side so don't worry you're gonna look like a turtle from the side but push your chin out and down oh, okay and that's so kind of listening just to the audio we're just we're pushing our chins forward <laughs> and so and then it down a bit because we do tend side, to hold our from heads the back it's fine yeah. yeah so that's why i say out and down because people um, hold their head a little too high naturally. Okay. So just bring it out and down and, uh, that's going to smooth out this part and then make sure we're not photographing up your nose. Nice. Nice. Um, and then my third tip, most of us want to look a little bit slimmer in front of the camera. And so if you just angle yourself at 45 degrees and then push your hips away from the camera, because we do tend to you know, want to lessen the, the size of how the lower part of our body looks. So you just put all your weight on your back foot, basically. So turn 45 degrees, put all of your weight on your back foot and then chin out and down. And then my bonus tip is define your waist. So if you're wearing something kind of loose, the camera can't see what your shape is. So it's going to make you look bigger than you are. So if you put a hand on your waist, it can help define your waist, give you a bit more of an S curve. Um, so those those are the things I use myself. If somebody else take my picture. Those are the things that are right through my head. I know. Well, a couple of the things. One, I'm going to put give a tip because this is something. Because I have a little bit of an interest in in photography. I got my first SLR camera when I was 16 years old. I worked in photography stores, and at one point in time, I considered doing it as a career, actually, Mm -hmm. instead of going into nursing. Um, Instead, I've just, I love, you know, I'm happy on on vacation if I can be taking pictures and so forth. I know a lot of people, including myself, I do a lot of photography now just with my phone because it it works quite well. Here's my tip for a good photograph. Wipe the lens. (laughs) People forget to wipe their lens. I see people putting up pictures and they're smudgy and they're weird and they think there's something going on. I'm like, you haven't claimed your lens. Literally your phone. It's got fingerprints all over it. (laughs) I know, it's got fingerprints on it. It's been in your pocket. It's been in your purse and it's gross. Just whatever. They make them harder now. We used to remember how, you know, like SLR cameras, you have to really baby the lenses, but these just wipe it off. Like obviously nothing rough. but and, And even just for the phones too. This That's what I so- mean. That's what I'm talking about. My yeah. husband is so guilty of that. He has all these cute videos and photos of our kids. And they're all and smudgy. Like, Did you clean that lens, please? <laughs> I know. I know. That's one of my biggest ones. If your pictures seem kind of blurry and smudgy, just clean your lens. <laughs> That's yeah. my tip. That's a great tip. Now, I have a question because I want to know this. Is often, here's what's hard is when when I take a picture, I feel I take time in composing it and, you know, making it look good. But of course, when I'm in a photograph, I'm handing it off to somebody else going, can you take our picture? So this is my question. Do you have any tips for whether they should be holding it higher, holding it lower? Because I feel when, I don't know, like, I know some, they like holding it, like people tend to hold it lower 
but then I feel like I'm like looking down and forced like, and high, like, I, yeah, like I know what I want them to do is stand back a bit and zoom in because one of the things that camera phones do is they are a bit more of a wide angle and you get distortion quite often. People take a picture, you know, if they come too close on it, but don't let someone put you on the edge. Yes. Don't. That's another tip is if you are, if you someone's taking a picture with their phone, this is a wide angle. Usually they're using, you do not want to be on the edges of that because it's going to your head's distorted you out and make you look huge. So yeah, and you're not, yeah, make sure. Yeah. Zooming in is, is it. but I think um, my daughter's like, they're very much into kind of like back up, back up. Cause I would rather crop the picture down. <laughs> So case. I move uh, my angle depends on how close up the photo is it. And I wouldn't go necessarily if I'm taking a picture of somebody else, I don't typically go above their eye line. Yeah. Like above, on my eye line. Yeah. I don't want to be okay. straight on when, when you take a photo of someone like upwards. And I know we do this with selfies because it makes us yeah. look yeah, it makes it's fun. a little bit better, but you get this bobble head effect. Um, especially with those wide angle lenses where your head looks huge, you look like a lollipop and then your body looks <laughs> tiny. And, um, but also it diminishes you. So yeah. you, the lower the angle, the more powerful you look. And when you take a photo down on somebody, it diminishes them and makes them look Interesting. Less. So I would go no higher than, than that eye level. So kind and of then, straight on. That's for a closer up photo. If I'm taking a full length photo, it's going to be at my belly button. Interesting. Okay. Okay. I love that. And last, so this is taking a different turn. We were kind of, we're getting into like photo lessons here, but I think people, and I hope that listeners really appreciate this for their own photography, because I believe when you take pride in your own photography, you can even better appreciate what photographers do for a living and if you are the person, the woman that's usually behind the camera, I encourage you find a photographer in your area. If you live in the Calgary area or Southern Alberta or Alberta at all, come and travel and, and set up an appointment with uh, Lori Brown. And I promise you it's, it'll be a day that you always remember, like to be pampered with hair and makeup and, and, and capturing your essence. I think that's wonderful. So we are signing off now, but do you want to end with just a little personal wisdom, just like your own personal wisdom, not necessarily photography wisdom? It's never too late to do something that you love is what I nice. would say. So, you know, nice. you're mentioning that at one time you wanted to be a photographer. Um, and I know you love what you do, but I mean, if, if for some reason you didn't, there's no reason why you couldn't start now. There's, you still have a lot of life left. Life does not yeah. end after 40 or 50 or 60. Exactly. It's wanted to do, just go and do it. Well, and I love that. And I love that for everything. For me, what I came to realize is that I love photography, but it's not what I want to do for my livelihood. So I mm. love doing it for my personal. And I think that's really important for all of us. When people go, oh, you're really good at that make it a business. And I think it's really important. This is a different, my little pearl of wisdom is decide whether this is something you want to do because it fills you up. It is your joy, you know, like your gas tank filler for your joy. Or is it something you want to do as a livelihood? And I, and, and you really get the sweet spot when you get both there. And I love that that's what you do. So um, all the information will be in the show notes under uh, wherever you're, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on your favorite uh, podcast platform. And I highly recommend that you go and visit Lori Brown's website. And do you want to just say what your website is here? It's lorimacbrown.com. And can I give a little promo for sure. your listeners? Sure. What I wanted to offer is that if you do end up booking a shoot with me, mention this podcast, and you're, you're going to save $100 no matter when you're listening to it. Amazing. If you happen to be one of the first people for the first five people, I will double that. So you'll save $200. Amazing. Session with me. Just mention this episode when you call. That's awesome. And we'll be sure to put that in with the link in the uh, show notes. So 
Take care, everyone. Uh, wishing you all the best for 2024 and make this your year, perhaps, to get your boudoir session done. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. But before you leave, I'm curious. What pearl of wisdom are you taking away from today's episode? I do hope it held some inspiration or information for you to live your best life. If you are not yet part of our sisterhood, I invite you to join our community by visiting our website, fabulousat50.com, and you'll receive a free copy of our ebook, Make Mind Fabulous, 21 Ways to Energize Your Life. It is packed with loads of tips and tricks. Plus, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review to let us know what you think. Remember, keep choosing fabulous. It's never too late to live the life you deserve. Catch you on the next episode.